Today is Palm Sunday, and uh, I, I love this Sunday of all Sundays. I love this Sunday, probably one of the greatest uh, times of, uh, in the Word. And I call this the Yashana Revelation. And what I, what I want you to do with me is I want you to imagine growing up in Israel, and like we do today in our, in our own culture, and like a lot of Christians, we look forward as, uh, as Christians to the return of Jesus Christ. How many of you are looking forward to the return of Jesus? And the Israelites, they had this great anticipation of the coming of the Messiah. And all of their lives, they had been taught Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, which says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. For behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble, and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. In fact, the truth of the matter is, is that in Jerusalem, the coming of the Messiah dominated every single aspect of life and culture for Israel. The coming of the Messiah was the central focus of every feast, of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, and they knew all of the signs of the coming Messiah. In fact, they cried out to him in their prayer, and their cry was this, come now. Would you say that with me? Come now. They sacrificed in anticipation of his coming, and the coming of the Messiah was on the heart and the mind of every Jewish person all the time. Now, if you study the Old Testament, what we know is this, is that the Israelites were commanded to keep certain feasts throughout the year. They were commanded to keep seven feasts and one festival for a total of eight throughout the year. And just like you and I have certain holidays that we observe every year, we're coming into, we're on Palm Sunday, and, and there's certain things that we do. We're coming into Easter, and then all of the different holidays that, that we like to observe, and we enjoy them, and we get our families together. And the feasts were a great time of celebration. So the, four, the first four feasts were these. They were Passover, which the, fa the Passover feast is, in fact, what everybody was doing in Jerusalem at the time of the crucifixion. Everybody had gathered to Jerusalem for the Passover. The second one is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And then the Feast of the First Fruits and the Feast of Harvest, which is Pentecost. The next three feasts were uh, Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, which is there, which is the New Year, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Would you say that with me? The Feast of Tabernacles. I had you repeat that because actually today what I want to do is I want to focus on that particular Feast of Tabernacles because that's where the story of the Yashana revelation begins is at the Feast of Tabernacles. And so the Feast of Tabernacles, the focus of it was twofold. Number one, the first thing that they did was they were to remember God's provision for them when they were in the wilderness. The second focus of the Feast of Tabernacles was the anticipation and the declaration of the coming of the kingdom of God. And so during the Feast of Tabernacles, during this, this celebration time, eight days, the Israelites would set up small booths or small huts on the, on the side of their homes, on the side of their patios or their balconies. And they would literally move out of their homes and they would move into these small huts that they had set up for a period of, of about seven days. And it was actually like this great party, kind of like camping out, un unless you don't think camping out's a great party. Some of you think camping out is a, uh, an RV. Some of you think camping out is uh, there's no pizza hut available at the Holiday Inn. And so they would set up uh, in these booths and they would be decorated with colorful fruit. They would be decorated with ribbons and they would be decorated with pictures. And, and on the tops and on the sides of them, on these festive kind of huts... They would, watch this, I don't, they would place palm branches. Long palms would be on the top of the, the hut and on, and on the sides of these, these, these huts. And they were a reminder 
that Israel at one time when they were traveling through the wilderness, these huts were a reminder to them that they lived in flimsy and temporary shelters during their 40 years of wilderness and that they were completely, watch this, you got your palms? Come on, grab them. This is, this is not a, yeah, this is Palm Sunday. These palms, how many of you don't have a palm? Oh, ushers, if you, if you don't have a palm, the ushers can get you one. See, that looks much better. These palms are a reminder of, of what? They are a reminder that we are, watch this, look at this. I am completely and totally dependent upon the Lord for my life. That's one of the reminders of this palm, so they would put them on there. And then the feasts themselves, the, the first and the last days of this eight-day feast were, were days of rest. But we come to this seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And it was called the great day, Hoshana Rabbah. Say it with me, Hoshana Rabbah. Wave your palm at your neighbor and tell him, Hoshana Rabbah. I lost the keys to my Honda. Hoshana Rabbah. It's the, called the great day. Say it with me. The great day. Hoshana Rabbah is a contraction of the word Hoshia Na. Hoshana Rabbah is a contraction of Hoshia Na. Say that with me. Hoshia Na. And Hoshia Na means this, the great salvation. Hoshana Rabbah, the great salvation. It's the great day. And you put both of those together and what you have is this, the great day of salvation. And what you and I know is that the great day of salvation is found only in Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And so the great day of salvation was this awesome, wonderful day of national celebration. And so the worshipers led their way to the temple would, where everyone would gather. They had their palms. They had their palms and they would make their way to, to, to the temple on this, on this, this great day of cele celebration and great joy. And the song of the day was this, was Psalm 118. Listen to what it says. The voice of rejoicing and salvation in the, remember, what did I tell you? They built under the side their huts, their tents. The voice of rejoicing and salvation in the tents of the righteous. Listen, well, I don't live in a mansion. Well, I don't have it made in my life. Listen, it doesn't matter as long as what is on the inside of that tent is the voice of the righteous. Amen. Because here's what I know. I may not be where God has taken me, but at least I'm not where I used to be. Come on, amen. I may not have it all together, but listen, I'm not in the bondage that I used to be in. You can look at where I'm living and say, you're living in a tent. I might be living in a tent, but it's the tent. And inside of the tent is the voice of the righteous. And let the righteous, of the, let the redeemed of the Lord, what? Say so. Don't get me started up preaching in here. Listen, the voice of righteous, of rejoicing and salvation in the tent of the righteous, the right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Some of y'all need to get on this thing right now. You've been hammered by the enemy. You've been tempted by the enemy. You've been lied to by the enemy. And your response to the lie of the enemy, you've been discouraged. You've been depressed. You've been despondent. And your response needs to be, I shall not die, but I shall live and I shall declare the works of the Lord. Come on. Amen. I think it's this microphone. I feel like an old time revival preacher holding this microphone up. <laughs> I remember one time taking my youth group when I was just a young buck. And I took my youth group to a tent revival. And inside of the tent revival was a man named R.W. Schombach. <laughs> 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 
And he said, you ain't got no problems. All you need is faith in God. Listen, Psalm 118 says, I will praise you for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. Watch, watch. Save now, I pray, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody shout amen. And so then, y'all settle down. So then part of the festivities of the day was what is called the water drawing ceremony. And the priest had two golden pitchers. One was for wine and one was for water from the pool of Siloam. And as the wine and the water were poured into the pitchers, the people thanked God for his bounty and they thanked God for the rain in the coming year. Y- y'all aren't even hearing me. I am so, I should have gone to Milan this morning. Listen, y'all need to hear me. Listen, they thank God for his bounty in the coming year. They thank God for rain in the coming year. They thank God for snow in the coming. Okay, stop. But by, by the way, interesting to me, during that ceremony of the, the water drawing ceremony, they had these two big golden pitchers, one for wine and one for water. During that time, Jesus was in the temple and he stood up in the midst of that great celebration and listen to what he said. If anyone thirst, let him come to me. And let him drink. For he who believes in me, as the scripture was said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. In other words, Jesus said, it's no longer about this golden pitcher. Now it's about who I am in you. Amen. In this golden pitcher, you're not going to find anything but water that's been poured into there in the hand of a man. Resembling and symbolic of nothing more than an expectation that we have. But when you find me, I will fulfill your expectations because I'm not just being poured out. Listen, God, are y'all hearing me? God didn't call us to come here and drink from cisterns. We've been called to drink out of the well. Amen. We're not building cisterns here at our church. We're redigging some wells. Amen. Because what we're after is not even just the water. We're after the water giver. Amen. We're after the life of the water. And so then On the seventh day of celebration, the Israelites would gather and they would march around. Interesting to me, whoever started this little march y'all had going on up here, y'all didn't even know I was headed here. But on the great day, on this day, they would take their branches and they, they would start and they would march around the temple seven times. So what you guys did here was, 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 was prophetic. They would start marching seven times with their palm branches waving, and they would begin to shout, Yashana. Y'all don't even know what it means, and you're still shouting it. They would begin to shout, Yashana, and here's what it means. Save us now. Oh, you do know what it means. It's on the board. Save us now. Deliver us now. Heal us now. Prosper us now. They would shout, Yashana. Save us now. Deliver us now. Heal us now. Prosper us now. Yashana. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, Yashana. And so last week in Encounter, we learned the word Yahshua. Yahshua is the name of Yeshua. It was the name when, when the angel met with, with uh, Mary, Gabriel came to Mary and he said, you're going to, there's something being birthed on the inside of you. And it's of the son, it's of God. It's the son of God. And it says, you're going to have a son and you're going to name his name Yeshua, Yeshua. Say it with me. Yeshua going to call him Yeshua, and it's the word for salvation. Guess what it means? It means deliverance, welfare, prosperity, and victory. Come on. Save us now. Deliver us now. Heal us now. Prosper us now. What were they doing? They were declaring their thanksgiving for everything that God had done. 
But as they gathered together, they were also declaring that in the year to come that they would live by virtue of Yeshua. They would live by virtue of, of Yahweh's salvation, by virtue of his deliverance, of his healing, and of his prosperity. And see, that's why I love Palm Sunday so much because you know what, you know what I'm doing? And in fact, what I do, because you'll find that in a minute, it's not about just Palm Sunday and it's not about just our Sabbaths when we come in here and we Sabbath together, but, it, but it's about this. Every single day, I've got to stake my claim. And, and today I'm declaring, I'm staking my claim for the next 365 days of this coming year. And I'm declaring that for the next 365 days that I'm going to walk in Yesh, the anointing of Yeshua. I'm going to walk in the anointing of favor. I'm going to walk in the anointing of deliverance. I'm going to walk in the anointing of prosperity. Are y'all hearing me? Yashana. So then, in their proclamation, they were, de they were also specifically declaring their expectancy of the Messiah. Now, what, what, are y'all seeing this whole picture? Here they are on the Feast of Tabernacles, and they did this every year, and they would, they would gather together, and they, and they, they would remember that, that God, you are, you are the one who, who delivered us. You are the one who saved us. You see, you got to know what it was like to be in bondage to Egypt, and now all of a sudden, you're a free man. Tell somebody, turn to your neighbor and tell them, I'll be a slave no longer. And so they're declaring, they're declaring what it is that God had done in them. They're saying, Lord, thank you for what you've done in us. We thank you that you have delivered us. We thank you that you have, you have rescued us. You have prospered us. And then they turn and they begin to make their declaration. They walk around the temple seven times and they said, not only have you done that, but in this next year, we're going to walk in that. We're going to live in that. We're going we're gonna to be the people that you have called us to be. Come on, amen. Listen, God didn't save you and God didn't rescue you just so you could sit and glory in your salvation. He saved and he rescued you so that you could become an ambassador of the kingdom. He saved and he rescued you so that you could become a spokesperson of the kingdom. So that you could flow in a new anointing. So they were declaring their expectancy of the Messiah. And here's what they knew. Watch me. Here's what they knew. That when the Messiah would come, he would come riding into Jerusalem. He would come riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Zachari I just read it to you, Zechariah 9.9. 9. You see, they, they grew up in Sunday school hearing about, hearing about the Messiah, Yeshua. Yeshua coming in and he would be mounted on a colt. He would be mounted on a donkey. And they knew that they, that was one of the signs they were looking for. We teach our kids, and I'm getting way off track here, but we teach our kids that, you know, well, some, some, some do. And, you know, I, I, it doesn't matter to me what you teach your kids about Santa Claus. I, I really, I'm not that kind of, I, I don't get all up in that. Well, you know. You take the letters of S-A-N-T-A and they spell Satan and all, you know. I mean, you know, it's a tradition. And we taught our kids, well, now if you lie to your kids about Santa Claus and then you tell them about Jesus, they're going to think you're lying to them about Jesus. Well, we don't lie to our kids about Santa Claus. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't spending all my money. Hello? Spending my hard-earned money and then staying up all Christmas Eve putting all that junk together. And then some fat man in a red suit gets the credit. No. Uh-uh. Daddy Claus did that. Hello? Santa Claus is sitting up on the, on, the, on the mantle of the fireplace. He's pretend. He's make-believe. But it would be like us teaching our kids that, you know, okay, well, Santa, they know my, our kids know what Santa Claus looks like. And then, and then another, okay, now, you, you guys, Santa Claus is going to come riding in here on a moose. <laughs> and he's going to be wearing a straw cap, hello, with a green suit. Come on. And cowboy boots. Now, how many of y'all know that if I told my girls that, they'd be like, oh, no, daddy. 
Santa Claus has a long white beard and a what color suit? A red suit. And he's not, he's not come riding in on a moose. He's being pulled by a by reindeer. Look, every Israelite knew that when the Messiah showed up, he was going to come riding into Jerusalem. And he was going to be on the back of that. They knew exactly what to look for. Now, let, fast forward with me very quickly to Matthew chapter 21. should be on the board. And when they drew near Jerusalem, they came to Bethage at the Mount of Olives. And Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied in a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says to you, say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. First of all, this stuff is just too easy. Why, why do you think God has, has found you and loosed you? Because he has need of you. Mike, all of that was done that, so it would be fulfilled by the prophecy. And tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the fowl of a donkey. And so the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt. They laid their clothes on them and set him on them. And a great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees. They spread them on the road. The multitudes went before them. And those who followed cried out, saying, what? No. That's our word. Their word was? Yashana. Do you get what's happening here? Listen, the, 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 the priests and the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they, they, they didn't want this because they didn't want nothing. It couldn't be the Messiah is going to be a, a dictator. He's going to be a, a ruler. It can't be this lowly servant, the son of a carpenter out of Nazareth. Nothing good comes out of Nazareth. It can't be him. But the people saw it. And the people knew it. They've been taught their whole lives what to look for. And here he is right before them. Yashana to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yashana in the highest. And so here comes Jesus riding on this donkey surrounded by worshipers. And they grab their, they grab their palm branches. What's going on here? Wait a minute. What's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture is that this is the feast of the Passover, not the tabernacle. This is not about the Feast of the Tabernacle. This is the Passover. Wait, they're celebrating the wrong holiday. It'd be like me coming up to you next Sunday and walking around going, hey, Merry Christmas. You'd be like, well, what's wrong with that dude? I bet that guy thinks that Santa Claus comes riding in on a moose. They're celebrating the wrong holiday. People are looking at it going, this is the Passover. This isn't the Feast of Tabernacles. What are you doing? You see, Hosanna is nothing more than the English transliteration, and it's made up of two words of Yashana, and Yasha means to save us. It's on the board. And, and, and Na means now. Save us now. So they were running to Jesus. They weren't just kind of celebrating. They knew exactly what they were doing. They were seeing the literal fulfillment of Psalm 118 coming to pass right before their very eyes. And they went and they started cutting down palm branches and they began to declare, save us now. Yashana. Hosanna is not even a praise. We, we use that Hosanna in the highest. And we, and we have turned that into this, 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 this phrase of praise. But it's not even that. The word Hosanna is, is, is not a, 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 a worship. It's a, it's a prophetic decree. It's a prophetic cry. It's crying out, Yasha, 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 na. Save us now. Rescue us now. Deliver us now. Redeem us now. Prosper us now. Yasha. Yasha. Na. Save us, Lord. Save us, God. I don't, I don't mind you going, oh, Hosanna. 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 I, that, that's fine. Do what you want. But just know this. That when you utter those words, Hosanna, you're uttering the word Yasha. Nah, 
and you're decreeing, God, I'm calling you my redeemer. I'm calling you my savior. I'm calling you my, 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 my victory. I'm calling you my salvation. So Jesus riding in changes everything. All of a sudden, the very thing that they have been taught now is being fulfilled right before their very eyes. And what, what, what are they doing? Look at me, everybody. Look at me. What are they doing? They're, they're seeing prophecy fulfilled before their very eyes. They're seeing the very thing that they've been believing God for. They're seeing the very thing that they've been, they've been declaring all of their lives. They're, they're seeing the very thing that they, they heard their, their parents decree. They're seeing the very thing that they heard their grandparents decree. They, they remembered the years of being in the, the Feast of Tabernacles and, 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 and building their huts and their booths and their, their little uh, lean-tos and their tabernacles and their, their tents. And they're seeing it come to fruition before their very eyes. It was almost more than they could take. And the joy and, and the ecstatic worship and the, and the declaration, this was the Messiah and they knew it. This was the Messiah, and they recognized him, and they cried out to him, Yashana. The sad news is this, is that Israel still gathers at the Feast of Tab Tabernacles. And they're still decreeing and declaring that the Messiah would come. The good news is that he already has come. The good news is that he's revealed himself and that today you and I have gathered into this place. Why? Because we are the recipients of Yasha Na. We're the recipients of his coming. We're the recipients of his salvation. And today we declare, we declare, I shared with our elders this morning. I love saying that. I shared with our elders this morning that even as I, and I don't, I don't know what it is about being here. And I don't know what it is about that bridge. But almost every single time I cross over that bridge, there's something of the word of the Lord that rises up in me. For one thing, you got to know me coming here has been such a, an amazing fulfillment of so many things in my life. And as a child, all of my life, I've been enthralled with the Mississippi River. All my life, all my life, I've read about it, and 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 we would we would cross over on vacation, and and to some, something about crossing the Mississippi. I mean, it was just like, wow. I mean, as kids, we were just like, this is the Mississippi, and we're crossing. This isn't just a river. This is the river. My whole life. And now I cross it three or four times a day. If my dad could see me now. Every time I cross that river, something of the Lord, it's just incredible. I don't even know what it is. But today I heard the Lord say that the mandate on this house, and, it, and I thought it was on me, but it's on this house is that the entirety of the Quad Cities said, this is your assignment, and this is your appointment. And I believe it's been on this house since the very first day that Dr. Court Camp came from Alton, Illinois, and put a tent up about two blocks away on Fifth Avenue over here, and, 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 and they came by the thousands, and broken bodies were healed, and, and people became saved, and drunks were restored, and families were restored, and, and revival broke out in the Quad Cities because of the obedience of an apostolic leader who came and said, let, let, God wants to do something fresh in the Quad cities. God wants to do something new. And I'm standing before you today telling you God wants to do something fresh in the quad cities. And, and God wants to do something new here. He wants to heal bodies. He wants to restore marriages. Come on, amen. And this morning I heard the Lord say that the mandate upon this house is a kingdom mandate. And the mandate upon this house is to see the rule and the reign and the lordship of the kingdom come over this entire quad cities what does that look like i don't know what 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 are the markers for that i don't know 
How, how will we know when we're making progress? I don't entirely know, but we're going to know. We're going to know. And again, I don't, I don't think it's just by their being butts in the seats. I, why, why do I think this church is growing and will grow? It's because the magnitude of what God has called to this house is going to take thousands, not hundreds. Can y'all hear me? I, I often, I, I look around here right now. And I, and I look at, I, mean, I can almost look at every single row. And, and, and I see the magnitude of the anointing that God has called. And, and, and why God, why, Lord, why are you bringing this magnitude of people? Why, I mean, you guys aren't even seeing what I see. I can connect the dots and show you anointings and show you passions and purposes. And, and Lord, what are you doing here? Why, why are you bringing pastors? And, and why are you bringing leaders? And, and why are you bringing gifted people that are here? Why are you bringing so many here? I'm telling you, because of the kingdom mandate that is upon us, it's going to require thousands, not hundreds. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, thousands, not hundreds. And I'm just telling you, we're, listen, hear me say this very clearly to you, because I, I, I'm, I'm not just up here singing Mississippi songs to you. But there's something of the kingdom anointing and the kingdom mandate that's going to sweep this Quad Cities. And we're going to start seeing a change in how we do politics. We're going to start seeing changes in the economic system of, of, of this Quad Cities. We're going to start seeing changes in how construction is done. We're going to start seeing changes in, in how churches are connecting one to another. Come on, amen. Th thank you for that word this morning. We're going to start seeing men of God stand up and declare boldly the word of the Lord. Amen. That this is no longer about, about us and them. This is no longer about black and white and Hispanic. And this is no longer about denominations. But God is breaking down. Are y'all hearing me? I said Yashana. I'm declaring over the Quad City, save us now. Heal us now. Deliver us now. Prosper us now. This isn't just about this house. This is bigger than this house. This is bigger than, I, I believe, even this city. It's, it's about who we are together as a community. And so then, we declare the kingdom of God. Israel was taught to declare the coming of the kingdom, and when it came, they missed it. Let me say that again. Israel was taught to declare the coming of the kingdom, but when it came, they missed it. They were taught to declare the kingdom. They were taught to declare Yashana. They were taught to declare, but then when the opportunity came, they missed the opportunity. When the king showed up, they missed the king. When the anointing was there, they missed the anointing. Listen, today we're declaring and you're being taught to declare Yashana. And when the kingdom comes, the only difference is we're not going to miss it. Tell, tell your neighbor, say, we're not going to miss it. We're not going to miss the anointing. We're not going to miss the opportunity. We're not going to cower in fear. We're not going to hide behind and, and, and hang out in our houses and not invite our neighbors for next Sunday. We're going to take advantage of the season and advantage of the opportunity. Everybody look at me. I'm about to close. I'm about to land this bird, and it's a hard thing to do. I'm trying to land a 747 on a re regional runway. Listen, this isn't about Easter eggs and bunnies. Come on, look at me. It's not about Easter eggs and bunnies. But if it takes an Easter egg and a bunny to get somebody and get them a breakthrough, I'll use an Easter egg and a bunny all day long. Come on, amen. Now, let me show you one interesting thing. And I want to close. I mean that. I mean that. I got rebuke for saying, you tell them you close three or four times. Okay, well, it takes that many to close. Watch this. Revelation chapter 7, 9 through 10. Is it on the board? After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number. Listen, can, can I describe MGT New Hope Church to you? A great multitude which no one could number. A great multitude. And what, and, and what makes up this MGT church? They, they are a multitude of, everybody say it with me, all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues. 
standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes. And what were they doing? Everybody say it. Look, with palm branches in their hand, crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation, Yeshua, Yeshua, belongs, oh, belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Hallelujah. And so today, I, I want to ask you to make your declaration. Go ahead and begin to stand up. I want to ask you to make your declaration over your year. I want you to declare. I want you to take advantage of this moment to declare the blessing of the Lord, to declare the breakthrough of the kingdom of God in your life, that the kingdom of God would come. And what, look at me, everybody. And that the kingdom of God would specifically manifest in your life, watch, through salvation, through deliverance, through healing, and through prosperity. Now, have you ever heard this? And it's found in our scripture today in Psalm 118. You see, the great day that I referred to you, that seventh day of this eight-day celebration was once a year. The great day was once a year at the Feast of the Tabernacles. But I want to draw you to, a, to your attention to one more messianic psalm verse. They referred to that day, and here's what they said. This is the day which the Lord has made. I will rejoice. You've heard that all your Christian life. Now you know it refers to the seventh day of the eight-day celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles, but they referred to this is the day. They were, that one day of the year, I want to declare to you today that the day of the Lord is not one day a year, but because of Yashana, because of uh, Yeshua, that it is every day of our lives. This is the great day of the Lord. This is the great day of salvation because Jesus is our Yashana. Amen. Come on, get your palm branches up now. Look into your year. Come on, right where you are. We're going to close. Look into your year. Begin to declare now. Father, I declare over my year, Yashana. I declare over my year that you are my healer, you are my savior, you are my redeemer, you are my blessing, you are my prosperity. Father, I will not be bound by the, the lies and the strategies and the hand of the enemy in all that I do. I declare that every single thing that I touch is blessed. I declare that every single thing that I touch is prosperous in Jesus' name. I declare that in my coming and in my going, I declare that whether I'm in the city or whether I'm in the country, whether I'm getting up, whether I'm in my home, whether I'm with my wife or whether I'm at work, no matter where I go, everything that I touched is blessed in Jesus' name because of Yashana. Come on, prof prophetically declare it right now. Yashana. Come on, begin to declare it. Yashana. I declare Yashana. I declare Yasha. 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 Save us. Heal us. Deliver us. Prosper us. Save us. Heal us. Deliver us. Prosper us. Save us. Heal us. Deliver us. Prosper us now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yashana. Yashana. I thank you that you are my Yashana. You are my salvation. And I declare today, Lord, that today is the day that you have made, and I will rejoice, and I'll be glad in it. And everybody said amen. Amen. Now, you keep this palm. I don't know what will happen to it. I don't know if it will dry out. I don't know if you could preserve it, but I want you to do something significant with it. If, if you didn't get one, I mean, we bought plenty for everybody. So let's make sure you find, where, where are the palms? That are? are there some left over in the back? Make sure you get one when you leave this place and you do something with this. Hang it from your rearview mirror or something or, you know, maybe make some earrings out of it or something. Put it on your bathroom mirror or somewhere. Do something with us to remind you that he is our what? Our Yashana. Okay, a couple of things. If you have a stack of those cards, I want you to posture yourself somewhere. I need some cards out here in, in the 7th Avenue exit. I need some uh, at the elevator. I need some over here at this exit headed to the east parking lot, out in the lobby. Everybody make sure you get a card, okay? Five or six of them. And go after your friends. Go after your neighbors. Go after those people that you think wouldn't come. They'll come. 86% of the people you invite 
will come. Meaning, if you invite more, more will come. And again, this isn't about just getting butts in the seat. This is about breakthrough anointing of people's lives. Amen. Now, finally, today is our Hope Feeding Hope. We have launched this ministry to just help any family in the life of our church. If you've had a rough month and you need some, some breakthrough in groceries, we have gone out and we have purchased those groceries on, on your behalf. And all you have to do is go. We have people that will help you straight over here to my right, your left. Go past the elevator over to what we call the institute room. Everything is set up, waiting on you. And so if you just need some extra groceries right now, you go and you help yourself. And we are delighted to serve you in that way and uh, to be a blessing to you. Can I get an amen? Everybody say hope feeding hope. And so if you need a blessing, then you go and you avail yourself to that. Am I forgetting anything? Are we? I don't know. Well, okay then. We know who's in charge. So according to Lee, we need help with that piano. Men? We need some men's men up here. Oh, oh, and some women. Okay. How many men do we need? So we need a bunch of men to come over here. If we all do it once, we're going to set the piano up on the platform. Okay. All right. Y'all ready for Sunday? Man, it's going to be awesome. This place is going to be packed. It's going to be filled over to overflowing. And we're going to have a great time celebrating the resurrection. Amen. Everybody say Yashana. All right. Hold your hands in front of you. We always like to end our services with a blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord God lift his countenance upon you and may he give you his peace. And you may you live all the days of your life walking in the blessing, the power, the anointing of your Messiah, Yashana. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. Amen. And remember, we walk by faith, not by sight. Have a great day.